Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Outta My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Back in the year 2014, there was a group of psychologists that did a study up in Virginia. And they wanted to study a bunch of kids in middle school. Why, you might be wondering. Well, they wanted to know what happened to all the cool kids. All those cool kids in middle school, well, most of them didn't turn out so well when they got older. Because most of those cool kids in middle school, they were born to rich parents. They were really good looking at that age. So most of them didn't realize that that's not how the world actually works. And this study that all of these group of psychologists did, that all of those cool kids at that age, when they got older... They are way more likely, statistically, to get arrested, have social intimacy issues, drug addiction, get divorced. In other words, those kids peaked too early. See, this is what happens in sports all the time, especially in a sport like football, because half of the players in the NFL went undrafted, and there's a reason for this. Many see that the top three quarterbacks in the state of Louisiana for high school football this year, Arch Manning, Eli Holstein, and Ricky Collins. Many of people will say, well, they're properly ranked, especially nationally. That's how they say they're properly ranked. But there is a good chance that they could be wrong because there's a good chance Ricky Collins could potentially be the better quarterback when it's all said and done with their college career. The biggest knock that I've heard on Arch Manning is that he hasn't really progressed a whole lot from the end of his freshman year into his junior year going into his senior year. Now, don't get me wrong, he's a good player, but for the most part, when you watch his freshman or sophomore film going into the end of his junior year, it just kind of looks the same. He hasn't really seen a huge jump other than maybe he's gotten stronger and bigger. And also, his accuracy, his footwork his release, his all these other things that you were fine in a quarterback, it's kind of already perfect. There's not really much else he can perfect at this point in his life. Arch has really, at the age of 18, perfected his craft. And considering who his family is, who his uncles are, who his dad is, who his grandpa is, he's not going to get too much better coaching in college than he's gotten so far in his life. And when I hear people say, well, you know, with Arch Manning's arm strength, it's not the strongest, but wait till he gets into a college weight room and he gets older, his arm will get stronger and bigger. Okay. Arch Manning is six foot five, 220. How much more is he going to grow? I mean, when you look at all the men in his family, how much more is he going to grow? Now, he can put on more muscle, but he's pretty filled out for someone his age. Ricky Collins. He's 6'2", 6'3", maybe, 190, 185. And also, Ricky Collins, as I found out recently, he's still 17 years old. He's one of the youngest guys in his, not only on his team, but his entire high school graduating class. Another thing that people don't bring up when they talk about Ricky Collins has been a three-sport athlete his entire life up to this point. Football, basketball, and baseball. Now, Arch has played basketball uh, for most of his life as well. He still, I think, played last year. But also, Ricky Collins hasn't had the coaching Arch has had his entire life. Ricky Collins just got Marcus Randall, a guy who played at LSU, was on an NFL roster for a few years. He just got him a couple years ago. And that's when Ricky Collins finally got more national recognition. Ricky also had a lot of stuff to clean up with his delivery of the football. Uh, it's kind of a long baseball windup. It's, you know, it's fixable, but he's already made some progress this past summer from some of the camps I've seen. Well, despite all of this long windup and, you know, not so refined footwork just yet, Ricky Collins was still, still named the most accurate passer at the Elite 11 camp this summer. A guy who has a a wonky wind-up, a release, some footwork that still needs to be cleaned up a little, although it's pretty good for someone his age. He was still the most accurate passer at the Elite 11 camp. Not to mention, Ricky Collins' offense at Woodlawn does not have the talent on offense, unlike, say, an Eli Holstein at Zachary. Zachary High School is a consistent state title contender and winner at the highest level in the state. 
they've done a pretty good job, and Eli Holstein is a big reason because of that. But Woodlawn, respectively, they have not been a playoff contender, but they're still at the highest level of classification. So you've got one quarterback running for his life against the same level of competition where the other quarterback, he's got more stuff to work with. It's like that study about the cool kids at 13 or 15. As their brains are developing at 13, 14, 15, as you're hitting puberty, the cool kids during that time are used to getting what they want. There's less rejection. There's less you know, social turmoil. The other kids, they become immune to a lot more emotional and social turmoil in their life from a very early age. So when the shit hits the fan in the real world, It's not so much of a culture shock to them. They've become immune to it. Same thing with a quarterback. Take Joe Burrow, uh, for example. Joe Burrow was 6'2", 190 pounds coming out of high school. Physically, he just was not very strong yet. Now, he was a very, very accurate passer. But, same with Ricky Collins, his throwing motion needed some refinement when he got to Ohio State. And that was partially because his dad and his brothers, while they were football guys that played and coached college football, They were not quarterbacks. They were not even offensive guys. They were defensive guys. So who taught Joe Burrow how to throw were really his regular, standard, run-of-the-mill, good Ohio high school coaches that had to teach him. Then he had to carry his high school team, which historically had never really won jack shit before Joe Burrow got there. He made them better. Look, I'm not saying Arch is going to bust, okay? I'm not saying Eli Holstein won't be any good. I'm not saying that. Matter of fact, I think Arch has the highest floor, less likely to be a total bust because he is so refined. But what I am saying is Ricky Collins may have the highest ceiling because Arch and Eli are more physically mature at this age, and they come from football family of quarterbacks. Arch speaks for itself, but Eli's brother, for those who don't know, plays quarterback at Louisiana Tech. But when Ricky finally gets into a Joe Sloan, Brian Kelly coaching system with that weight program where they refine his throwing motion and his footwork, where despite those things, he was still the most accurate QB in the 2023 class. And for the first time in Ricky's life, he will be focusing just on football all year round. Look, I think LSU got a potential steal of the 2023 QB class. It just so happens to be a Baton Rouge kid. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.